Marcel's abilities have been on display at NTI since she joined in 2020. By February 2021, she was given responsibility in Barbados for implementing the technical integration of the NTI and Coursera Learning Management Systems and launching the platform by May 1st that year. Since then, she has been responsible for managing and expanding the NTI Coursera program. Proven in digital, social development, and strategic communications projects, Marcel pursues opportunities to combine the world of project management, agile methodology, and strategic thinking with experience in financial services, technology, and education. In project management, she is solutions-driven and motivated to get things done, particularly through cross-functional teams that deliver value, including building stakeholder relationships. Marcel actively promotes and practices lifelong learning, and she leverages the direct and conceptual skills she has gained through such learning, most recently the award of Certified Scrum Master, um, as well as academic degrees from the University of the West Indies Cave Hill and the University of Warwick United Kingdom. So that's Marcel, and our next guest this evening is Mr. Raphael Saul is a 35 year old business consultant. I know he looked like he had Aussie mother features, but it says here he's 35 years old. He is a motivational speaker, corporate trainer, attorney, and entrepreneur with a passion for helping people achieve their full potential and helping businesses exceed their targets. Raphael holds an associate degree in business studies from the Barbados Community College with a distinction and a Bachelor of Laws degree with honors from the University of the West Indies. After spending a number of years as legal counsel for the multinational Te telecommunications corporation, cable and wireless communications, Raphael began speaking. His consultancy company is called Vanguard Consulting Inc. and has provided services to companies in the financial services, insurance, retail, automotive and hospitality industries with a focus on customer service, customer excellence training, sales training, leadership training and development, change management, team building, strategic planning, project management and implementation. He is a pro sci which is a certified change management practitioner and project implementation strategist, presently on consultancy with the government of Barbados as assistant director of the National Transformation Initiative. Raphael's favorite quote is by none other than Nelson Mandela, and it says, it always seems impossible until it gets done. So we have some good persons presenting for us this afternoon. Um, very quickly, I'm not going to steal their thunder, but just to give you some idea of who the National Transformation Initiative, um, more familiarly known to us as NTI, is a dedicated, and I'm reading from their website, is dedicated to training, upskilling, empowering, and transforming the lives of every Barbadian. They take an inclusive approach towards learning, enabling all students to take part in the learning process and giving them opportunities to realize their potential. The priority is making the NTI's learning platform accessible to all Barbadians, regardless of their backgrounds, learning styles, or abilities. And they believe that each Barbadian has the potential to excel if provided with the skills, knowledge, and tools. And Marcel and Raphael this afternoon will be telling us a bit on how we can obtain such skills, knowledge, and tools. So before we before I hand over to our colleagues, I just want to also um, update our membership. Um, for those who are members of the Barbados Association of Professional Engineers, and I have, we have several colleagues who are here from the Barbados Institute of Architects. In terms of the engineers, in 2018, the BA, uh, sorry, the BAPE would have established guidelines on continuing professional development for our members. Um, this was participation in a mandatory CPD program has become a requirement for international trade in professional services. 
Professional organizations around the world are moving relatively quickly to implement compulsory CPD programs for their members with varying consequences. We recognize the speed with which technology is changing and hence the need for continuing education for engineers in order to remain current and to stay relevant. The BAP is working tirelessly to ensure that engineering professions in Barbados is properly, are properly positioned to participate in the global marketplace. So as a committee, this was realized um, back in 2018, um, just before COVID. And since then, we have implemented several um, sessions where we have given our members the opportunity to obtain CPD outside of them um, going it themselves. So we have these, we, these monthly webinars where we permit our members to obtain at least two CPD, CPD points per webinar. We also have had tours. And this evening, we are really excited to have our friends from NTI to come and tell us um, how they can help us to remain current and to obtain uh, recognized certification, which can be utilized as CPD um, yearly. We are aware that some of our members are also members of international bodies, which require CPD as a requirement as well. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn over to Marcel and Raphael to take us through this evening. Guys, over to you, thank you. Thank you so much, Vincent. And it's a pleasure to be here along with my colleague, Raphael Sol from the National Transformation Initiative. Um, as uh, Vincent said, my name is Marcel Greenwich, and it is a pleasure to share the information that we have to share with you this evening. Now, I, I don't want you to think that this is going to be a lecture. Uh, I think we've all had enough of school in the old fashioned way, but what we are proposing to share with you this evening is really something of a fireside chat to tell you a little bit more about learning in a new way, learning new skills and complementing what you already know with new skills that help you to be better at what you do. Now, I think that the mere fact that you are here is testimony to the work that you've done uh, professionally, um, the academic work that has underpinned the work that you do now, the skills that you've gained over time, the things that you've done um, by way of the various projects in which you have been involved and the skills that you've learned along the way. Those are all part of the body of knowledge that you already come here equipped with. And we are not proposing to teach you those things all over again. What we want to be able to do is find a way to enhance what you have. We have a saying at NTI, um, that we've coined and it is that you're never too good to get better and that is really a motto that underpins I think what continuing professional development is supposed to do it keeps us at the cutting edge of our professions it ensures that we are current it makes sure it makes sure that we are aware of changes in our profession and how we can adapt to be able to accommodate those changes and better execute our roles wherever those roles may take us. So I'm aware that we have a potentially broad audience this afternoon. Um, not all engineers are cut from the same cloth and they are all you know, in various fields. Uh, we may also have, um, as Vincent mentioned, those persons who are here from the Institute of Architects and we welcome them if they are here. And so we propose to have the kind of conversation that really just introduces you to what we do and, and gives you a, a lay of the land and introduces you especially to possibilities for learning. I'm just going to pause to allow Raphael to also come in and we'll have a chat and then we'll also invite you to chat with us. Thank you so much, Marcel, and a wonderful good evening to all of you. It really is a pleasure, as Marcel said, for us to be able to join you this evening just to open up a bit and share about what the NTI does, what we offer. And also, I think, to provoke some thought and discussion around the idea of what skills are required to be relevant and effective as you function in the roles you currently occupy. I heard this analogy recently, and I think I'd like to open with it. 
we are as professionals, two trains running along two parallel tracks. I hope I don't get myself in trouble now using any um, incorrect terminology as it relates to, to the mechanics of locomotion. But we are, as professionals, two trains running along parallel tracks. On the one hand, we have our technical skills. Whether we are attorneys or civil engineers, coastal engineers, electrical engineers, regardless of the area of specialty or expertise we currently operate in, there is no substitute for strong technical skills. And so it's very important from a continuous professional development standpoint that we don't rely simply on old knowledge, but that we're keeping ourselves sharp, sharpening the ax, remaining on the bleeding edge, so to speak, of where learning knowledge and practice as it relates to your technical skills continues to go and continues to grow. But remember I said, we are two trains running along two parallel tracks. The one that runs alongside the technical skills, your know-how in your technical area, those are the skills that are not often given enough attention. And those are the skills that are corollaries. In fact, they are the ones that allow you to function effectively as a technical practitioner in your space. And, and so we like to call those skills success, success skills. And as professionals, we have to ensure that we are paying attention to both trains that are running along these parallel tracks. And so what we focus on at the NTI is, yes, providing opportunities for the development of technical skills in various industries and across various areas, but also we put focus on developing those corollary skills, the leadership skills, the change management skills, the communication skills, the negotiation skills, all the things that help you, they fill the tank, so to speak. If the technical skills build the vehicle, then those success skills, they fuel the tank. Mm -hmm. And so our CPD discussion this evening, and certainly the one that we want you to carry forward even beyond this session, has to do with both of those trains running along the track. So. Marcel, I'll hand back over to you. Those are my opening thoughts. And perhaps we can get into discussion now on what this landscape of CPD looks like and the opportunities that are in fact available through the NTI for members of the BAPE and also the Institute of Architects. Of course, Raphael. Now, one of the things that I'd like to sort of segue into the discussion with is a reflection on what we've often heard from the World Economic Forum, for example, in relation to the kinds of skills that are required, um, whether they are for students or whether they are for professionals. And you know, we're talking about work skills that we often hear about. Now, we, we talk about analytical skills and analytical thinking and innovation active learning and learning strategies, complex problem solving. As engineers, I'm sure that you are quite aware of problem solving and critical thinking and analysis and so on. How have you been able to blend all of these together to do what you do in a much better way? One of the things that Raphael mentioned was the fact that these are complementary skills. What you do in terms of your technical skills and I'm sure you're, you're doing them well, these are complemented by the other skills that help to ensure that you have even greater success in how you deliver what you do, whether it is in relation to the work that you are presenting to stakeholders, for example, how are you interacting with various members of your teams? Should you be leading teams or should you in fact be even a part of a team? Because leadership does not only happen from the top. We are also looking at leading from the bottom. So how is it that you are able to communicate better with your team members or with those to whom you report or provide information? How are you able to provide influence? How are you able to deliver the information that is required across the various spheres in which you work in a way that whether it be uh, someone to whom I mentioned you are reporting or whether it is to your client, 
it is imperative that we understand how to deliver the information in ways that are meaningful to the people that we have to interact with. And Mar if Marcel, you, hello? I, 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 can give a, I can give a very relevant example that I had only today. Okay. And it is a representation of what you're saying and also something I have observed across the region. So today I was in a conversation with a very, very technically astute professional from one of our sister islands in the Caribbean. And after he'd spoken for about 20 minutes, I responded to him by summarizing or paraphrasing my understanding of what he'd said and what the expectations would be of me and our next steps going forward, mm -hmm. all in about 30 seconds. <laughs> and he, pa he paused, <laughs> after 20 minutes of speaking, he paused and he said, what you just did is what I would love to be able to do. I was not able to put my words together in a concise and clear way to communicate to you what I intended, but you were able to sift through it, understand what I was trying to say, and reflect that back to me so that we could get to a point of consensus. And I said it was a reflection, Marcel, and, and team joining this evening of something that I've observed across the region. I have found so many technically astute, I mean, sharp as a tack. They have tremendous amounts of technical knowledge and expertise, but where many of them have fallen down is in their ability to communicate that effectively, whether it is in the form of a stakeholder presentation, whether it's in a Zoom meeting, um, the, the ability to capture those thoughts succinctly, understanding the dynamics of communicating that depending on your audience and adopting various styles and approaches. That's an example of one of those corollary skills, one of the two trains that run alongside each other that help you to not just be knowledgeable, uh, and not just be technically skilled, but ultimately be influential and impactful in your space. Mm -hmm. So sorry to cross you, Marcel, but it immediately raised the experience I had today that I thought I would use to segue into that point. No, it's a perfect it's a perfect opportunity to share um, some of our courses as well, because I, I do recognize that we have already reached 25 minutes past the hour. So yeah. it's really a good point at which to begin to really share more information regarding the types of courses. We've just touched them broadly so that you have a sense of what is available to you. But Raphael will share a little bit more about how you can see some of those courses, gain access to them and begin your journey. And those journeys can be within one to two months, two to three months, five to four to five months, or two hours, depending on what you choose. It's really intended to be painless, it's asynchronous, it's at your own leisure, and it really does give you the opportunity to enhance your skill set while implementing those skills as you learn them. So take it away, Rafi. Thank you, Marcel. Before I dive into a bit of an expose on the courses, some of them at least that we have to offer on our platform, there are a few features about what we do that make it unique. And I want to say make it an opportunity that every one of you on this call and even many of your colleagues who may not be on this call will want to grasp with both hands. First of all, it's free. And I don't have to explain to professionals like yourselves, many of whom may have spent thousands of dollars, thousands upon thousands to obtain the certifications, diplomas, master's degrees, uh, technical qualifications that you have been able to achieve over the years, I don't have to explain to you how significant it is that there is no financial investment for you to benefit from this information and to gain the certifications and, and complete the courses that we offer through our platform. Of course, if you are familiar with Coursera at all, you know it is a global e-learning provider. And so many of the courses you're going to see us navigate, there are courses offered by some of the top universities and learning institutions in the world. And if you're again familiar with the platform, you'd know that Coursera will allow you to access the course, preview the course. But if you want to complete assessments and receive a certification, that is where you'll have to fork out that money. 
but through the NTI partnership, we have made this freely available to all of you. Here's another feature I think is very important, especially for me as a busy professional, and I can identify with many of you as busy professionals as well. These courses are available on demand. What that means is you can start it at your convenience. You can complete it while you have time to complete it. Maybe you are in transit, taking a trip somewhere to complete work. Maybe you are um, at home after work. You're in the morning before you start your day. Whenever and wherever it is, it is convenient for you, as long as you have a device that allows you to access the platform, you are able to do that learning on your time, on your own schedule. No more worrying about carving time out to be in a particular class at a particular time, at a particular location. All of that is removed by the way that we are delivering this content. Also, there are assessments and quizzes during the course of each of these programs, whichever one you choose. But let's say a date is set for an upcoming assessment which you are to complete online. And for whatever reason, you got busy with work, you're unable to, admit to, to meet that particular deadline or complete the assignment by that deadline date. It's easy, you can go in, I'll show you how you can reset your deadlines and, and it'll give you additional time to complete it. Also, you complete a quiz and you're not satisfied with your grade, you want a better grade, you want the opportunity to do it over, you can easily take that quiz again, use the knowledge that you've refreshed as you reviewed the course material or course content again, and approach that quiz again, get a better score. It is intended to be very user friendly, first of all. And it's also intended to ensure that it fits within the lives of busy professionals. We, know, we don't want that CPD feels like a business sacrifice for you. We don't want that there's a trade-off between I need to make income this month and I need to do my CPD this month. We want that you're able to take care of both trains on that track simultaneously as you're navigating through your days, through your weeks, and through your months. All right, so those are a few points about our courses, the programs that we offer up front that I thought would be beneficial for you to be mindful of or to be aware of. So nti.org.bb, nti.org.bb, that is your home base. That is where you start your journey with us. Registration is quick and simple. Once you've registered, and you, you'll, you'll get to a dashboard that captures some essential information and data about you. That dashboard, I just, I'll just click it here so you'll get an idea of what your, your dashboard will look like once you're registered. That dashboard will give you a snapshot of where you are. I'll show you a bit about our NTI courses, the indigenous ones that we've created before we go into our Coursera programs. But as you can see here, it's extremely user-friendly and easy for you to engage with. Maybe you started a course and you don't remember which course you were doing at the time because there were so many you selected and enrolled in. You can easily pick up where you left off. And that allows you to, to go back immediately to the point in the course where you last were the last time you were logged on and just continue your learning journey from there. If you're like me, sometimes I like to go back to maybe like the module before the point where I immediately left off, just so I can be sure that I've reminded myself or refreshed myself on the information that I had most recently covered before I continue on. And so this dashboard really ends up being like a home base. It, you can complete your profile, you have access to learner forums, but I'll just click courses here so we can jump right into the meat of where you will be looking to build and enhance your knowledge and recommit to your journey of continuous professional development. I wanna jump here to view all Coursera courses. As Marcel mentioned earlier, and as I alluded to, we are in a partnership with Coursera, the global e-learner provider, e-learning provider that gives you free access to thousands of courses in all kinds of areas all across the world. So we did speak about those two parallel tracks, the technical one, and also the, 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 the more success skills oriented track. 
So let's say, for example, in the course of the work you were doing in the field of engineering you currently work in, maybe there was drone technology. You wanted to build your skills in your ability to utilize, um, operate, maybe learn a bit more about aerial photography using drones. We've got courses that can help you to build a hard technical skill in that area. As you see, uh, some of them are right here. I just pulled those as examples to show you that we're able to provide you with content that can cover both of the trains that are running on these parallel tracks. But equally, and as you can see, searchability is very, very simple. I thought of UAV just now, and I thought of negotiation. So now I'm going to type negotiation. We mentioned that earlier as one of these success skills, one of those things that comes alongside your technical skill and helps you to be more effective in the space you currently operate in. Maybe you want to build your high performance collaboration skill. I want to become better at leadership, teamwork, and negotiation. You'll notice many well-known established business schools are providing these courses, international and cross-cultural negotiation as an example of one. Negotiation and mediation, conflict resolution, it's a, it's a capstone project, negotiation fundamentals. And it's easy to see the overlaps, the intersections between what I'm doing technically. I've done a project from an engineering perspective. My technical skill has allowed me to complete the project. Now I need to do negotiation with the client. Now I need to do negotiations with stakeholders. And so building my negotiation skills helps me to be more effective on the ground as I'm operating in the area of my technical skill. So I'm just going to highlight negotiation fundamentals here as a course. Let's say you wanted to enroll in and start this course. As you saw, I just searched negotiation. I was able to find this course. Now I'm going to go over here. It gives me a bit of a snapshot. It is provided by the Essex Business School. It's a course. It's a course that covers negotiation fundamentals. I'll just hit view course. When I hit view course, it takes me into a more dedicated course area. So we have sort of structured the courses or group the courses rather into various programs just conceptually. And it helps you as you're looking to navigate the different courses because in an environment of thousands of courses, we don't want you to feel like you're at an all-you-can-eat buffet and you don't know where to start. So we've grouped them into conceptual areas to help you understand maybe the direction you want to go in approaching those courses. So I've clicked Negotiation Fundamentals, as you see here. Uh, it tells me, first of all, the course has a 4.7 star rating out of five stars. I can go down and read the reviews so I can get feedback from other learners all over the world who have also completed this course. Over here, I'll see if I can highlight it. This gives me just a brief overview of the course, kind of like a short description. So maybe I review it and I feel like, you know what, I think this is the course for me. It answers the problem I'm looking to solve. It helps close the gap that I have observed, I have witnessed, and I know that it would be useful for me to complete this and gain the knowledge. A few important course snapshots will always be on the right. As you see here, flexible deadlines, as I mentioned, excuse me, at the end of the course, you will receive a shareable certificate. I talked about that earlier. You receive your certificate digitally. You get it by email. You can print that and keep it at home, frame it and put it up entirely up to you. Many of our learners do that. Or as is very important, as we are building our online professional profiles, you will want to share that on your LinkedIn profile or other areas where you are, where you have a professional presence. You'll be able to do that as well. You see the course is 100% online. I'm over here in case you're wondering where I'm reading. It also gives you the level of the course. So that the course can be either beginner, intermediate, or advanced in level. And this is important because you'll have an awareness of the level of technical knowledge you need to be able to interact meaningfully with the course content. If it's a beginner level course, 
then you know it's pretty much a low threshold of entry for anyone brand new to negotiation to jump both feet in and get immersed into the information. It also, very importantly, gives you an estimate of the number of hours it will take to complete the course. Now, you could complete that course faster or you can stretch it out a bit longer. It's entirely up to you. A module that the course contemplates, you'll finish in one hour, maybe because of the demands of your business, maybe because of the demands of your work, that our, that our module, you have to complete it over the, over the course of a few days. As I said, it's entirely up to you. You are doing this on your own time. So once you review that, you've reviewed the course snapshot information on the right, you can come down and see a bit of what the syllabus includes. Week one, you'll cover negotiation strategy. You'll see it right there. Week two, you cover negotiation preparation. Week three, value creation and value claiming. And week four, the negotiation process. So it gives you an overview, a course overview of what the content in each module each week will cover. And you'll also see here, if you're paying attention, six videos. So you'll know that each of these courses has a number of videos inside that you will be using as your instructional material. So I'm ready to start this course with the Essex Business School Negotiation Fundamentals. I'm going to jump in and just hit enroll. Once I hit enroll, as you'll see, I'm enrolled into the course. And now I'm going to click go to course. This is going to take me into the actual course or learning area where I'll be completing the course content. So you'll see here. Uh, negotiation strategy. There are 34 minutes of video left. I'm going to start with the introduction, why enroll in this course in the first place. So once I hit get started there, I want you to observe a few things. Uh, I'm going to let Marcel, when she comes back on, talk to you about that pop-up you're seeing, the AI assistant Coursera coach. So Marcel, when I hand back over to you, which is right here for those of you who are seeing the screen, when I hand back over to you, Marcel, you can touch on that. So this is what the inside access to your course or learning area looks like. There are a few things I want to mention here. As you'll see, this is the video that constitutes the content module for why enroll in this course in the first place. You can download this video as well if you want to save it on your device and watch it later. That's an option for you. And then here is a really, really great feature about learning on the NTI Coursera platform. Right below here, you will see a transcript of everything that the presenter, the tutor, the trainer, the lecturer, the course director is saying in the video. So it allows you to engage with this regardless of your learning style. Maybe you play this and you watch it because you're a visual learner. Maybe you play it and you listen to it. Maybe you do both. Maybe you listen and you read or you follow along as the presenter is going through. All of this is really geared to and designed towards you being able to learn effectively and engage with this course content regardless of your learning style. You can capture notes, you can save uh, snippets of course or content information. It's almost like if you were in a in a lecture, a lecture theater and the tutor is going through the information, rather than writing those notes, you can save them as snapshots as you're going through the content. So as you can see, it's easy. There's a low threshold. It's very interactive, very user-friendly, and it is designed to fit within your current schedule and to be balanced with the demands of your current professional commitments. So I just wanted to give you this snapshot and give you that sort of learner view so that you're able to see how not only this can work for you, but how even if you're someone who is brand new to learning online, many of us cut our teeth in terms of our academic and educational experiences in classroom settings, physical classroom settings, and maybe learning online is a new experience. I wanted to show you that so you could see that this online learning experience is not just like sitting down in a Zoom session listening to someone speaking. 
It is a very engaging, interactive, multi-sensory experience that allows you to immerse yourself in the information while fitting into the commitments of busy professionals. So Marcel, I want you to come in here. We've sort of had that overview, that look through of what the platform looks like, uh, what it can offer. And I'm sure that there are people on the call, professionals on the call, who will be eager to get on and to get their feet wet and to explore a bit what some of the course options might be. They saw the pop-up with Coursera Coach as well. So maybe you could mention a few things around that also, Marcel. Yeah. Thanks, Raphael. Uh, Coursera Coach um, is one of the ways in which we are trying to enhance the experience that learners have on the NTI Coursera platform. That is really a global part of a global uh, beta test that is taking place, and Barbados is participating in that to help us to understand what it is that our learners are most interested in. Have we been able to identify those things that are most appropriate to what they are saying their needs are? Have we tailored it sufficiently well to accommodate those needs? Are we providing the information that they want? Do we know what it is that they really want? Are we able to decipher it? Does the platform have the appropriate support? And so on. There are many questions that this is intended to both ask and answer, but it is based on data-driven information that comes directly from the user so that when it is developed, it is tailored specifically to ensure that it reflects the needs of our learners, whether they are here or whether they are across the globe. And something that Raphael, um, he, he skipped past it, but I want to pause and, and bring it to your attention and that is the fact that apart from what you're learning on the platform from what is provided by the various schools, you're also learning um, as part of a peer group. And that peer group is in fact a global peer group because we have a number of discussion fora across the various courses. You'll see it at the top, just above enroll. Just, it says why enroll, just below the word enroll. You'll see it right there, come down, come right down. Just one moment, come back up to the top. Just come back to the top of the video. Next to notes, you'll see the word discuss top left, yes. And you'll see that there are discussions that you will engage in across the content that you are um, interacting with, with people around the globe. There will be groups that you will get involved in. There are, there's feedback you'll get from your peers so that it's not just a single lonely experience that you're having as you do the work. Um, whenever you come back into the course, when life permits you to do whatever is needed, then you can come in and you have these conversations. It's part and parcel of the study. It may differ um, depending on the type of content that your course uh, that you choose may have. So the degree to which you may be interacting may differ, but it will always be there. You will find some level of interaction and it allows you to really have conversations with peers across the globe. How, how good is that for networking without trying to network? You really do have the opportunity to interact with people you know, in your profession, wherever they are and, and whatever stage they are in their careers. Now, one of the things that um, I, I think I should also mention is that people often wonder um, if it's not going to cost me anything, but I'm using my various devices, what does that mean in terms of my data usage? One of the things that we have made a priority is to ensure that we have a zero rated arrangement with the various carriers, well, we have two um, carriers here, so that regardless of your service provider, you're not using data as long as you're using our site. So if you're going off site, you, you will end up using data to some degree, but other than that, you are in fact not using your data, so you're not even being um, expensed in that way. Now, the other thing that I also want to mention is that it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be static when you're learning. You're looking at the various slices of time that you have available to you. You may be just idly doing nothing at some point during the day. 
or we, we, we end up scrolling through our IG feeds and realize that 30 minutes, 20 minutes, 15 minutes have gone by. And all you've done is scroll through an IG feed and see in somebody else's content. You have the ability to also download the Coursera app on your phone or tablet and use the content offline and scroll through that. You can cover a module in five minutes, 10 minutes, and you've completed that by the time you get back to your, your desktop, if you're doing you know, some sort of omni-channel experience, you're using your phone at one point, a tablet at another, you're using your laptop or desktop at another point, you have the opportunity to operate across all these platforms that you're, you have at, to, your, at, your, at you know, to your advantage and take in the course content incrementally. So it really does give you the opportunity to fit what we do into your lifestyle, into your work day, into your work activities and benefit all along the way as you are able to integrate what you learn into your day-to-day -day activities. Marcel, I'll jump on right after you just to say, finally, because I want us to give at least a few minutes, I know we do have a few remaining, for any questions that the participants may, attendees may have, I am conscious also that as professionals, you may also be running offices. So you may have assistants who are working with you. You may have uh, finance persons or accountants. You may even have someone in HR who is dealing with some of the administrative and business sides of your technical business. And I'm conscious that there is, also, there is also an opportunity for you to put some of those persons in line for upskilling. So we do have courses that are dedicated for financial professionals. We do have courses that people are taking that help them to upskill in the area of human resources and so on. So I'm conscious of this being relevant for you. And I'll, I'll finish with this. I'm conscious of this being relevant for you and your own CPD. But I believe there is also a great opportunity where you are in an office with professionals who are covering other areas of the business to also have them in line to be upskilling and improving themselves, which ultimately feeds positively into your business and its growth and development as well. So we could go on as you've realized, <laughs> but one of the things I want to do before we close is to provide an opportunity, uh, Vincent, to hand back over to you and to provide an opportunity for the attendees who are on the call, just to ask any questions that you might have in the five minutes or so that we have remaining. And then we're happy to bring this to a close. This is not a closed door to BAPE and or the Institute of Architects or any other colleagues or affiliates who are on the call. We intend to have an open door to working with you and continuing to explore how we may provide opportunities for you and support your CPD or other needs and requirements as far as we're able to provide them as well. So Vincent, I'll hand to you and open for any other questions, any questions that participants may have. Great, guys. Fantastic presentation. Thank you so much for the information that you've shared. Just letting you know we're doing very well on time. We normally close these sessions around 7.30. Um, so we're doing good for time. Let's hope that we get some good questions coming in. Now, there are a couple of things I want to point out to our membership again. Um, you can go onto the Barbados Association of Professional Engineers website, and you can go under... Um, the CPD guidelines, which gives you a complete outline of the 2018 professional development, continuous professional development um, program. Um, in a, uh, appendix number one, it gives you a breakdown of the various CPD points and how they are, are awarded. Um, we also, I just want to read this in terms of the explanatory notes on the Number 10, explanatory notes. It says the activities that will qualify for CPD points can either be specific engineering related activities or general non-engineering technical career development activities. So when Raphael spoke just about the two trains on the two tracks, obviously using the NTI platform, you have an opportunity to advance your career in both offer, in both on both tracks. There will be professional content of an engineering nature on this platform. 
there will be professional content of a project management nature on this platform or in general management nature, because as engineers and professionals, architects, etc., you're not only dealing with the technical aspects of projects, but more likely than not, you will also be in engaging in some managerial aspect of the project, whether it is to project manage the entire process or a portion of the process. In addition, you will be required more often than not as a senior member uh, or as you advance your career to manage teams that may come on an your remit, whether they are teams within a department or teams within a company that you're working for. So there, you really have an opportunity to avail yourselves not only of technical information and technical um, content, which are engineering specific, but you also have that ability to build out some of those soft skills, whether it is you need, maybe you are great technically, but as Raphael said, you might not be the best communicator and you need to build on those skill set. You have an opportunity to do that through Coursera and through NTI. If it is that you run your, you, you are, you've just started your own professional practice and you need some guidelines as to how to do administrative, the administrative part of the, of the office work and so on. You have accounts programs you can log on, uh, starter accounts programs you can log on to learn the basics of accounting, learn some of the, the techniques in management. So there are literally thousands of courses from, and I need to stress this, from recognized um, institutions of learning. And it's important I, I, I say that because as a professional, whether you are BAP, BIA or otherwise, when you submit your CPD, it has to be from a recognized um, source um, to, be, to, to be acknowledged. So for BAPE, the CPD events are grouped into six categories for us. You have symposia, which, con which composes of conventions, conferences, seminars, workshops, talks, etc. Two, service to profession. Three, presentations and publications. Four, post-professional studies, such as research, fellowship, short courses. Five, general CPD activities, and six other. So these NTI courses that you can avail yourself of will very easily fall into the um, post-professional studies or the general CPD activities. And I would ask that you go onto the website and see what those are. But more importantly, what has been stressed here this afternoon, guys, is that these courses are free. You are not required to pull your pocket to obtain these courses. There is a level of flexibility that exists in completing these courses where you can work at your own speed and within your own time. Um, I think the team from NTA have been at pains to stress that CPD, uh, at least the way they are offering the CPD, is not meant to be onerous, but meant to give you the opportunity to do these programs and these courses within the time that you have. And the flexibility of the courses allows you, as you say, if life gets in the way, that you can jump off and jump back on to these courses. So there's a lot of flexibility built in here. It is the best price you can get in Barbados right now, which is free. And it, there are credible courses being offered by some of the best institutions. If you go onto the Coursera, you see courses being offered by Harvard, courses being offered by Oxford, courses being offered by MTI. I mean, they are recognized institutions and universities of learning. So guys, I will really encourage you especially as we push towards making ourselves better as professionals in the built environment to take opportunities such as these and avail yourself of these opportunities. So I wanna open the floor at this point to give you guys an opportunity if there are some questions perhaps that you may have, which has not been explained or some other information you may need explaining a bit more. I want to offer you the opportunity now to jump in, ask a question, by all means, Raphael and Marcel are here. And we are really happy, guys. Um, I'm not going to speak out of term for the president, but we are definitely very happy to have you guys as partners. And we will see how we can deepen that partnership uh, going forward, because this is a very credible opportunity for our members to avail themselves of credible, uh, recognized training in CPD and fits very well into our 2018 initiative um of 
having um, credible, um, available content for our members. So um, until we get some question, um, Rafia, Marcel, is there anything you want to add? I'll, I'll just say this very quickly, Vincent, and then um, my colleague Marcel is going to lead the Q&A <laughs> section. I just need to shift to address something momentarily. But what I will say, Vincent, is you're absolutely right. You're on point. And I think that for a long time, CPD has had a bit of an onerous, it's been painted with a bit of an onerous brush. It has felt very often like the after work work that will take you away from your family. It will take you away from your extracurricular activities. It will take your weekends and all kinds of different things. And then ultimately, you know, you're, you're facing some difficult examinations that you have one chance at, that you have to pay to take. All of these hurdles that you often have to overcome in order to, 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 to improve yourself, really, to build on the skills that you have. And given the global shifts that we have seen towards skill acquisition versus simply the achievement of a credential or a qualification, which are, I mean, those things are extremely important, but what we've seen, and this is supported by the data from the World Economic Forum and several other agencies and, and bodies, what we've seen is that greater global priority is being placed on the stacking and acquisition of skills. And a skill might take you, Vincent, 10 hours of a course, 15 hours of a course, which maybe you complete over the course of two or three months at your convenience, at your leisure, but you acquire a skill that can actually help you be more effective as you're on the ground in the field doing what you do. So with this global shift towards skill acquisition and skill development versus just the, the broad anchors of qualifications and credentials, or in addition to, I should say, the broad anchors of qualifications and credentials, then we have a bit more of an agile learning environment where we're not calling on any professional to hunker down for the next four years in order for you to acquire this skill. But we're saying to you, here is the information, here is the content, here is the access. All you need to do is be willing, be intentional, and to build it in to whatever your current schedule and professional and personal life look like. Maybe it's while the children are doing a particular activity, the children are at tennis, you're sitting on the side, you can be doing a module while that is happening. It's very, very, very flexible and it's meant to be that way so that you can grow and you can acquire those needed skills without imposing too much. So I'm going to go off camera and my colleague Marcel uh, will be here just to make sure that you're covered in terms of any questions that you have. But Vincent, from my perspective, from on my train, let me say a huge thank you to you for just opening the door here and for your hospitality, inviting us to come and facilitate this session. So please, we're looking forward to hearing your questions and my colleague is definitely here to answer all of them. Raphael, thanks so much for your engagement this evening. Great. Pleasure. All right, so Marcel, we do have a question that's come in. Um, Joan is asking, are there any age restrictions for attending the free courses? This is a perfect question. And if nobody had said anything, I was going to go directly to this because Raphael talked about the, the, the study taking you away from family based on an old paradigm. One of the things that we encourage people to do is if you have children, if you have youngsters that you believe you want to either they have an interest or you want to help to point them in a particular direction, give them the opportunity to access the information on the platform. Raphael mentioned the levels and the fact that we can start at the beginner level. It doesn't really matter so much what the age is as it is a question of what you believe the ability is. And it is a, a, it's a clean, it's clear testing ground. You can't break it and you can't lose by taking advantage of what is there. You try it, 
And if it's something that you think you can handle, and if you have someone that you'd like to introduce to the, the content, then by all means, just find that thing that you're interested in and, and begin to experiment. You can't go to one of the colleges, even the ones that are listed on this platform and say, I'd like to sample a few courses. Let me just try for free and see what happens. What you can do with the courses on this platform, however, is to start and, and get an idea of what is there. One of the things that we are going to be introducing um, sometime very soon as well is a product called Clips. You're familiar with shorts, and I'm sure you watch reels on, on your social media platforms. You can also do that on the Coursera platform by way of uh, very short clips that allow you to sample some of the content. And if it's something that you think you want to do, then you can, you can press ahead with that. So I hope that you get a sense in that lengthy answer that it is not age restricted, we, we have said at times in some fora that we want to make sure that persons are of a certain age because of the, the particular context in which we may have been speaking at a particular time. But we want to make sure that we give our youngsters as well the opportunity, but there's also no upper limit either. We've had people who are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, retirees, people who are looking to change professions, people who are now learning new things regardless of age. So don't think of it only in terms of the limit at the lower level, there's also the upper level as well. Great, thanks for that, Marcel. Okay, I'm so seeing Gordon's question. question. Yes, we got a question from Gordon, who's an architect. I'm sorry. Hello, Gordon. Gordon. Um, I, I, um, I, you know, well, Gordon? I'm, I am. Hey, Marcel, yeah, and everybody. Hi, hi Gordon. Good, good. No, it really wasn't a question. I'm just saying I'm sorry more architects didn't attend, and I'm going to see if I can somehow reach them through the um, institute to at least inform them basically what's going on, because you have all these free courses that we can do, and it's amazing. Yeah. So I, I think we just don't know about it. I think that's the yeah. problem. Garden has seen some courses being offered on the Harvard Architectural School, um, which are interesting, you know. So there I mean. is a wide gamut of courses there to avail oneself of. So it is really useful, a useful tool and a useful partner for us to have professionally. Yeah, it's, ama it's amazing that this is free. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yes. Yes. It's, it's sort of really funny the, the effort. It's, it's, it's something that you don't hear spoken much of when people talk about BERT. We hear, yeah. a, we hear a lot of the political talk around it, not recognizing that this is a plank of that program that was intended to ensure that Barbadians, wherever they are, as long as they're in Barbados, and some people have gone off island and still access the platform, can increase and improve their skills so that they're globally competitive. And we want to ensure that people take full advantage. We know that there are some people who have not been uh, familiar with the online learning environment, but there is there's also information on learning to learn. I mean, it's not just a matter of throwing yourself in off the deep end and hoping that you swim. There are courses that help with mindset change, learning, learning in a new environment. It's, it's all really tailored to ensure that we assist people in, in moving from wherever they are at the present moment to where they could be. And if they start today, they don't have to look back two months from now and say, I wish I had started. So uh, when it comes to the Institute of Architects, we, we do have some courses that we've identified already that can be shared with you directly, but that has absolutely nothing to do with what we could do in terms of talking to you further and giving you further pointers as yeah. to how you can become involved. The information that is shared here this evening is information that they can access through the BAPU website anyway, but you will have the opportunity to have further conversations with us so that your membership can benefit. And I know that you also perhaps have other associated organizations, maybe architectural technologists and so on, um, who may benefit uh, people who are in real estate. It, it really runs a very wide gamut. 
Marcel, what type of feedback have you had from professionals who have been utilizing your service? We have various types of feedback. There are persons who are um, quite enthusiastic about the fact that is there. And then there are those persons who will always be skeptical. Uh, we can't get away from, from that. Mm -hmm. But those who have taken the opportunity to benefit from it, one of the things, I'll, I'll share a particular example with you based on, um, I think it's relevant. I remember having a conversation, and, and it's outside of your realm, but I think it's still relevant. I had a conversation, and we actually recorded it at, at a later date, where there was a young man who was studying at the time. He was at the University of the West Indies, um, looking to become a, a human resource uh, professional. And he saw the courses being offered and he determined that he would supplement his academic study. Just forgive me, my, my battery is running a little low. So I'm just sure. trying to make sure that I don't cut out in the middle of this. Um, so what he did was to, just one moment. Sure, Marissa, no problem. What he did was to, uh, perhaps do what most people might think to be quite unusual, but I think it was quite astute of him to do parallel courses. He did courses on Coursera while he was doing his various courses of study at the university that actually improved his performance at university one. It propelled his career because the things that he learned on some of the courses were not what were being offered here. And it made him a far more outstanding student and candidate when the time came for him to present himself for job interview situations. I say that because sometimes, you know, some we've had people who have been extremely transactional in their approach, in that their approach is, is their approach has been, what am I going to get for it? And we've been at pains to try to tell people this is not the way in which we want to be approaching learning. Any learning that you, you, you undergo is a value that you take forward with you into new contexts, or you may take it into old contexts, but you're seeing what you are seeing in a far different way based on the new information that you have. We've had people who've said to us, that they did courses and they applied for jobs and got them based on the information that they were able to share, not because of the certification itself, but because they now had a newfound confidence about the knowledge that they gained and they, they weren't parroting it. They were able to integrate that logically into the conversations that they had around the things that they were doing professionally that made them far more outstanding than people who were coming based on, well, I did my degree however many years ago, and therefore I know it. Whatever was applicable in 2008 must still be applicable now, and I'm still talking about that. No, what they did was weave into their conversations the newfound learnings and experience and practical application that they were able to do during the courses that they did that made them far more successful than their peers. And that's why one of the things, and, and Vincent, it sounded very much like you were listening to a conversation that Raphael and I had um, earlier. And that is that you learn from the various institutions so that you can bring more value to the things that you do. And whether it is in relation to the technical skills that you can still benefit from here, you have those complementary, what we call success skills. We don't call them soft skills because I find that we have taken a sort of negative and pejorative approach when we talk about soft skills. And I don't want to suggest that this is something that any member of uh, the BAPE has done or the BIA, but once we have become qualified in some technical area, somehow we think that those other skills are somehow irrelevant, when in fact, those are the skills that help you to shine 
that make you so much better than your peers, that distinguish people in ways that they would never have imagined. Raphael gave the example of his Caribbean colleague who could not succinctly deliver the information in a way that Raphael, who was a non-professional, was able to do it, and sort of non-professional in his area, was able to do in a very short space of time. So these are the things that we are encouraging people to do and, and encouraging professionals to take advantage of so that by the time they've taken one, two, three, there are people who have taken as many as 200 courses on our platform already. I don't say that to shock you. It tells you the level of interest that people have there are people who have only been able to do one, but for them, that one was a major milestone because they never imagined in a million years they could learn anything online. So don't look at the one versus the 200. Look at the fact that people have been able to step outside their boundaries and grow in ways that they did not imagine possible. And for you, that could be in terms of an area of endeavor that is related to a course of study that you have already undertaken, but there's now new knowledge. There are additional skills that you can use to enhance what you already know, or there are new skills that you can take on board altogether, whether it's you, whether it's someone in your office, as Raphael mentioned, whether it's use your stakeholders, even, and, and one of the things that we've said is, if you are part of a profession and you are looking to get more highly qualified candidates, provide some of these courses and say to them, we don't know where you will land. We don't know yet what you will do, but we want to make sure that you come in already on the cutting edge and equipped to join us as members of this fraternity. Oh, forgive me, there, there may very well be females in here, so I don't want to be necessarily gender specific, but to be part of our professional organization, enhance your candidacy with the kinds of skills that are available to you. Take advantage of them, learn them, don't rush through them, absorb them so that when you come, you come with a level of knowledge and understanding that is really beneficial to you and it enhances your own profession, ultimately, because you're not now just dealing with people who have had the benefit of an academic experience, but don't yet have a sense of all of the other nuances that they may be called upon to draw from as they engage with either yourselves as employers, as, as colleagues, or as clients. Fantastic. So just some quick reminders, everyone. Um, Raphael, in his discussion, did mention that the train one and train two analogy, where he said train one would be the success skills which build the vehicle, and train two is the colliery skills which fuel the tank. And I think we've, we've heard of uh, those possibilities this evening. I also want to remind persons to take advantage of the offer. You have to go onto the NTI site and you have to register. Is that correct, Marcel? To be able to take advantage and not just log into Coursera directly. Correct. NT, um, I, he's placed it in the chat. Training.nti.org at 655 is a timestamp. Training, uh, sorry, nti.org.bb is the site that he has used. Um, yeah. I default naturally to training.nti.org.bb, uh, which takes you directly to the login page, but simply through nti.org.bb, you don't even have to remember the www, just go straight you know, to nti.org.bb. If you don't do .bb, you'll end up on the nuclear training site or the nuclear something institute. Um, so remember to add the .bb and you get directly there. Now, there is another option that is available should your membership be interested in doing it that way, which is that we can bulk upload all of you. Once we had access to your emails and you shared them with us, 
we can bulk upload your membership and send them invitations directly to their inboxes. That is time sensitive, however. So once that is something that is undertaken, should we do it that way? It means that you don't have to then go to enroll yourself. We will have enrolled you and also sent you the invitations to join the, the Coursera, uh, NTI Coursera uh, part of our learning management system. Great, Marissa. So we're going to reach out through probably Stacy, our secretariat, and mm -hmm. see how we can really build out this, this uh, relationship to the benefit of our members. And I'm sure that Gordon will um, likewise uh, reach out or have the BIA reach out uh, from their end. Because as I said, this is um, a fantastic opportunity that I don't think we should just let slide. So Marcel, I really want to thank you and Raphael for coming on this evening and sharing what I thought was some very interesting and important information to really help our professionals to develop beyond where they are and to continue to hone their skill set as they develop not only as technical professionals, but as managers within the various organizations um, that they may act and work within. So guys, I really want to thank you. Really dynamic presentation, and we did learn a lot. So thank you so much for coming on. This is um, not a one-off. I'm sure we will have like to have you back again next year to help drive home the point of the importance of CPD. Give us an update on anything new that is happening from your end. And as I said, Marcel, we will reach out in a meaningful way to see how we can do more together so that our, our membership can really benefit from this opportunity that um, really exists at this point in time. So thank you guys so much for coming this evening. It's been a pleasure, Vincent. You have Such been an advocate of the NTI's courses. As I listen to you, I, I couldn't help but think how much you have shared the message in, in, in an accurate way that benefits your own membership. Um, if I may, Gordon, um, I've sent you a private message to ask you to share some information with me before we log off, if you can just check the chat. Um, but Raphael, please uh, let me allow you to speak as well. No, Marcel, nothing further. I'm grateful for this opportunity. We are at the NTA, very grateful for this opportunity. And we are really looking forward both with BAPE and Gordon, also with the Architects Group, we are looking forward to meaningful engagement that allows us to be able to support you all as you are developing as professionals. That is our goal here. So again, really, really wonderful opportunity. We're very grateful. And I, I will, of course, also bring greetings on behalf of our, di our director, Dr. Alison Leacock, who I am sure under normal circumstances, as long as time permits, unless providentially hindered, she makes sure she is at every engagement. So I bring greetings on her behalf as well. And thank all of you for your time and for your attention this evening. It has been a pleasure. Thank you very much, guys. Thank, thank you, you so much. So just some uh, notices for our general membership. Um, we do have the annual awards and dinner that will be coming up on Saturday, December 2nd. Um, and that is being held at the spanking brand new Wyndham Sam Lord's Castle. For any of you members who are interested in sponsoring, um, um, becoming a partner with us in sponsoring this event, we ask that you reach out to Stacy in the office or to Joan via email and indicate your interest in joining us in that regard. Also, just to uh, bring you guys up to date, we will be having this Saturday the award ceremony for our joint effort with the Seroptimus International, um, which is the will be under the patronage of um, Lady Mary Simmons, um, the Seroptimus International of Jamestown, in collaboration with the Barbados Association of Professional Engineers. And we will be looking at our SIJ BAPE STEM project for July 2023. Uh, which was introducing girls to engineering. So we are really excited to have partnered with the Seroptimus again this year. And look out on our website. We will be posting some uh, photographs. Um, if any of you are interested in attending, just to offer general support to the event, again, we ask that you reach out to Stacy in the office. 
and she will give you further details. The event is being held at the Barbados Light and Powers Christie Conference Room. For those of you uh, familiar with our offices, that will be just upstairs of our office. And this is a really great initiative where we've introduced um, several secondary school age young ladies to the potential of entering into engineering um, degree and engineering profession. So we're really excited to have played a part in this again this year. So without further ado, we thank you for joining us this evening. We ask that you monitor your various um, channels so that when the next event comes up, um, you'll be able to jump on, register, and become involved. Mm -hmm. And as I said this evening, you will be seeing more information and more activity pointing you in direction to NTI to avail yourself of the CPD. Um, you may be saying, well, it's coming up to the end of the year, so maybe I want to start that in the new year. That's fine. This is the best time to start planning how you can do that. You can go onto their website, you can look around, see what type of courses, and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the offerings and perhaps make then a comprehensive plan of how you're going to attack this in the new year. Whatever your plans are, CPD is a requirement for you as a professional, and we want to encourage you guys to keep current with what is going on because that's the only way we all can improve professionally. Thank you so much all for this evening, and I want to wish you all a pleasant good night. Thank you so much, Vincent. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you, everyone, for joining.